Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Monica. I like to post anti-MLM and some life content here on this channel. Um, I am holding Lily because she is with me today at work and <laughs> she's wearing the cone of shame and she kept bumping into <laughs> the tripod. So I figured I would just hold her for the time being. So that's why she's here. Also, I forgot to put in the intro, but just so you guys know, this video is for entertainment purposes only. And it's just our opinions and the experiences of Rachel. So, and of course mine, if I add anything about mine. So just wanted to throw that in there. But I did want to introduce this particular interview um, because I spoke to, her name is Rachel, so she'll be speaking today on my channel. She is anti-MLM. She has a very um, interesting and sad story of, I mean, it, it ended well, so there is a happy ending, but she had a very rough start, and I did want to say trigger warning. There is talk of some very, very heavy topics, especially in the beginning of this interview, so I would recommend that watch this at a time where you are in a good, I guess you can say mental state, only because um, some of these things might upset some people that are watching, but I do think that it's a very important story to tell. So I guess let's just get into the interview and uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And please, please do not show any hate, do not show any judgment or anything like that, especially to each other in the comments. So let me know what you guys think. All right, without further ado, let's get into it. All right, Monica. Well, my name is Rachel. I'm from Georgia, from Northwest Georgia. And thank you so much for having me on your channel. And thank you I, for coming. <laughs> I thoroughly enjoy your channel as well as the other anti MLM. Like this movement, I really think is amazing and much needed. And I want to encourage you and everyone just to continue what you're doing because this is important. It's way more important than I think people realize. And I don't. Uh, my husband says I'm really dramatic. He's like, you're so <laughs> dramatic. I'm like, I'm just really passionate is what I am. Yeah. I'm very passionate. And I'm passionate about this particular issue because it has impacted, I, I really feel like my entire life from, from childhood because as I shared with you before, it, it's been in my life, my whole life, being from a small town, it's saturated with Mary Kay, Avon, and among many other pampered chefs. And so I grew up around it and it was kind of a part of life. And then as I got older, I never, I didn't join one until I was older. But um, so just to tell my story and my personal experience, social media really was on fire in my teens, like my late teens, early 20s. And my life was just lived out loud for everyone to see. And I wasn't living the best life. And I was, I had issues with, I, I had a drug issue. I was partying and doing all these things and just everyone knew it. Everyone saw it. And it was just all over the place, not to mention going to jail and that being public record, you know, mm -hmm. so everyone knew my business. And then in 2012, I just, uh, let me back up just a little bit. During all of this, I got involved in the sex trade industry. And that is a whole story in itself. But it was a very dark time for me. And it, I was, I was like a zombie on this, a zombie walking. I, I, I had lost all touch, uh, you know, I had lost touch with reality just completely. So in the midst of all that chaos and craziness, I met an awesome group of ladies who helped me get out of the situation that I was in. And so 2012, my social medias were shut down. I was like, uh, I went to rehab uh, for nine months. And so I was completely, I mean, out of nobody spoke to me. I didn't call anybody except my mom. I was so focused on recovery, like so focused on recovery. And so then about a year goes by and realizing what I, I had been through that I really had a story to tell and I had a testimony to tell and to give other people hope, which is 
what I'm doing here too, Monica, like I want to share this just because, and I'm not, and I'm like, show my face. I don't care because I want, I want to be real. I want people to know they can relate to me. I'm far enough removed from it, you know, because I, I think when we share one another, when we share our stories, that's really what gives people hope. And so I chose to share my testimony and my story and the, and to reveal the ugliness of the sex trade industry and human trafficking and, and really what that is. And it's more well known and talked about now, but it wasn't as much then. So with that being said, I, my story was featured in a book and I spoke uh, publicly and then Jada Pinkett Smith contacted me to do a, a, a documentary with her about human trafficking. So I did that and then I, that was about the time that I, I reactivated or started a completely new Facebook and Instagram. So then it blew up and everybody was like, oh, there she, there she is. So during this lifestyle change, I gained 60 pounds. I looked, I, looking back, I, I, I didn't look terrible, but when you come off of drugs, if you're familiar, your body is just, it's in shock. And so you gain weight, you get acne. And although I, I was definitely more healthy, my appearance had changed. I used to have like bleached out long blonde hair and I had cut it all off. I mean, my appearance had completely changed, obviously, because I wasn't. And two, I didn't want to look like that anymore. I didn't want to be 100 pounds and stringy blonde hair. <laughs> so, so anyways, I had um, just different people reach out to me and I couldn't have been a bigger bull's eye target for an MLM Hunbot, okay? Mm -hmm. So I had a son in the midst of all that craziness I was telling you about. And when I got my life back on track, I'm trying to get my feet on the ground, get a job, and someone had actually gifted me some money, I, enough money to get on my feet, like a down payment for an apartment, whatever. And so I had that little savings and I was making minimum wage at 40 hours a week working at a health and wellness gym. Uh, so I got my membership free. So I was able to work out and all that. But I had a little, um, you know, nest egg of money that I was sitting on for to get on my feet. And so when the, the coach, the Beachbody coach, it was Beachbody, contacted me. Like I said, I couldn't have been a big, bigger target. Because I'm trying to get a hold of my health and lose that extra weight and be financially free for my son. And I was just like, I'm all about it. I will say this, though. I never had any intentions of recruiting because I, I knew that I, I could have never recruited somebody like me ever. I would have I would have never told a mother, a single mom. You, yeah, you need to spend a little tiny bit of money, extra money you have to become a beach body coach, you know, like, mm -hmm. or any, and let's discuss. Mm -hmm. Isn't that just disgusting? So, yeah. yeah. And so I, but I did, I, I, I thought I could go on with it. And I had no, I was so ignorant about the structure of the company. And I sold a kit, a challenge pack, and I got my, my big $13 check in the mail, but yet I'm spending $90 a month to keep that Shakeology order because you have to do that to be, um, to keep your right. status. Mm -hmm. Yes. So also, uh, let me back up a little bit going back to the Hunbot that recruited me. And I just want to say she's out of it now and she does health and wellness, like apart from MLMs. Mm -hmm. So, I had told her, I was like, I want to, this is what I want to do. I want to be in this business. I want to, I want to do group fitness or whatever. And I said, I'm thinking about getting my AFA or ACE fitness certification. And she was like, oh, you don't need that when you're a beach body coach. <laughs> that would have been an investment to my future. Spending that money would have been the, the better thing to do with that extra money. But I was so ignorant. I was 24 or 25 and I just was so like, 
I just believed her because I was really gullible. I'm a lot tougher now, but <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely have learned. But I honestly now I'm a little jaded. I don't know if you are, but I'd be thinking everything is an Emily. Mm -hmm. I am. Um, yeah, I totally <laughs> am. So, anyways, I but I took the bait and I I did the challenge packs. And as we've uh, you know I've heard you talk about it and. Uh, Emilia and the Recovering Hunbot, it, it's not about the products. The products are so irrelevant. Mm -hmm. It really doesn't matter if they're good or they're bad. So mm -hmm. I was successful with the program. Uh, but yeah, so when, uh, we'll call her Amber. That's not a real name, but we'll just call her Amber. <laughs> <laughs> so when she reached out to me, I just was so I just, I don't know. I just trusted her and believed her. Oh, which I went to high school with her. <laughs> like she was your typical, like just jump into my DMs and, uh, you know, start recruiting. And, you know, she was so sweet and she was so driven. And that th I think about it now and I'm like, girl, you should have been taking that energy and doing something else with it because mm -hmm. you're, she was so good at it. And then I think she eventually quit due to like mental health. And it's just so draining, you know? Yeah. For That's the, really sad, the, actually. It is really sad. And I, I hear it a lot. I hear mm -hmm. that happen a lot um, where, you know, and your, your confidence is just torn to shreds mm -hmm. because you weren't successful. So that's, that kind of leads me back into my story. I sold one challenge pack and I'm, mm -hmm. I was my biggest customer as most are. And I now mind you, I'm still working the minimum wage job and I'm trying to get on my feet. I was living in a friend's basement, like for rent free, thank God. And I'm getting this subscription. And at some point I looked at myself and I was like, I'm living rent free. I, like, I don't even, I shouldn't be doing this. This isn't wise. Mm -hmm. And I, and I told, I talked to Amber about it and I was like, I don't know that this is best. Well, you're not trying hard enough. I don't even have to tell you. Uh, mm -hmm. You already know. You already yep. know. <laughs> you already know. Do you want to be independent? Do you want to take care of your son? Do you want to not to to live a life that's where it's not tempting to to go back to the? Oh, sorry, I got a phone call. Mm -hmm. Where it's not tempting to go back to the lifestyle that you came from. Do you want a different life? And I was like. I, I mean, I totally was sucked into it for a while, but mm -hmm. then it got to where I literally couldn't afford it. I couldn't do it. And so I'm glad I didn't go take out loans and stuff. That's only because my credit was shot, but you know, yeah. <laughs> thank God that it, it just worked out. But yeah, so that's kind of my, my story on the, the whole MLM thing. I think that they, they took advantage of, my vulnerability mm -hmm. in every area. Yeah. So um, you were part of just Beachbody, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so then, I mean, we did go over the whole how they recruited you, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is really, uh, that's so sad. Like when you told me your story and I was reading it, I was like, I don't know how I'm going to get on this call with her and not want to cry. Um, <laughs> 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 because when you told me everything that happened, I know that you touched base on it a little bit in this, um, in your story. Um, but as soon as you said the whole, how there was like the drug problem that also went with that, um, mm -hmm. just to also give you a little bit, I've had many friends who have passed away because of that. So that's why, you know, whenever I hear that, I'm always like, you know, I'm glad that you went to rehab mm -hmm. and I'm so happy that you're in recovery because not everyone's story ends the way that yours does. And I feel mm -hmm. like that's why for you, the fact that you were targeted for an MLM and it's like, that's so sad because you were trying to get back on your feet. You were trying to mm -hmm. get back into a normal life. Mm -hmm. And I, that just, it's so and sad I to me. <laughs> Yeah. And I shared with her because I trusted her, mm -hmm. you know, and, and the story was public. So it's not like I, I shared like truly intimate, but I told her, I told her how much money I had. I told her 
that I had nothing that I, I told her, you know, my car was given to me, Monica, like mm -hmm. I had nothing. I had to drop everything because when you're on drugs, your whole life revolves around it. So yeah, I was doing what I was doing and I was in the sex industry and, um, adult entertainment industry, mm -hmm. but it all was like this hamster wheel. It doesn't matter how much money you make. You just, you know, it snorted up your nose for a lot. I mean, that's just the truth. Yeah. And I, so I never could take a hold of my financial situation. And then when I went into a rehab facility, I mean, do you know, my mom had to go, uh, you know, pay all my bills. I had no money, like no money. And so when I came out, I came out strong, but I, I see why people get back into it because it's really hard. I just had a really good support system. So she knew all those things, but all they see you as, as, a, as a money sign. And in her defense, she's just getting fed from the higher up, higher up, and is made to believe she's helping me. But I've not seen one team call. Monica, not one team call where somebody gave the, the good advice. Hey ladies, if they're, you know, don't push it. If they're not doing financially well, like don't put your sister in a financial bind. Don't, you know, don't do that. Cause that's, that's not good business practice. If mm -hmm. I was selling something, I would, I, I mean, I can't imagine asking somebody for their last little bit of money or just their extra cushion money, you know? I was mm -hmm. listening to your, um, your car wreck videos. Oh yeah. You know, I was thinking, dang, I, I, I was just thinking today, I was like, I can't afford to get in a car wreck. Like, do I have any yeah. nest egg? Well, I mean, those are real things. And um, these, these, oh, it makes me so mad when I see these hunbots on their, their live feeds. And they're like, if it's your last hundred dollars, mm -hmm. spend it. It's worth it. Girl, you, you better go send that last extra hundred dollars on groceries to mm -hmm. feed your child. And especially children. Look, say this is what my husband was talking about. I get fired up about it <laughs> because they're literally taking food out of kids' mouths. That's yeah. how serious this is. That's how serious this is because it's a gamble. And, they, and moms are just hoping um, <clears throat> to make an, an extra dollar. And it, it is not easy. Isn't it funny, too, how they'll go from saying anybody can do this to you got to work so hard. Mm -hmm. So anyways. Yeah, it's like it's in my opinion, it's one big contradiction. And my whole thing is because when I was in MLMs, um, I will say that when I was with uh, Mary Kay, which was the first one, mm -hmm. so she targeted me because I had a lot of debt. Um, I was yes. young and dumb. <laughs> yes, so, yeah, I, yeah, I watched yeah, that video. Yeah, so she definitely targeted me because I told her, like I flat out told her, you know, I'm I'm really sorry, but I can't buy the challenge pack or like not or not the challenge pack. Oh my gosh, I'm getting my MLMs mixed up. But yeah. Um, <laughs> But I was like, you know, I can't afford the starter kit because I am in a lot of debt. And she fed me the whole financial freedom thing. And then with Beachbody, Beachbody was a little different because um, I actually did want to help people. I just wanted to be there for people. And because that's just how I am, um, which is why, you know, my, my upline wasn't pushy or anything like that. But as soon as I got put into the group, now, mm -hmm. she's a great person. I have nothing against her. She has also since gotten out of it. But yeah, the, some of like the other uplines, the things that came out of their mouths, like the one thing that always, always struck a nerve with me was when they would say, no, doesn't mean no. It just means no, not right now. And I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, so y'all are out here, you know, saying the whole no means no with other mm -hmm. things that are happening in the world. But when it comes to this, no doesn't mean no. Like, I don't know. It's, yeah. it's, it's just, it's so frustrating. And I'm sure that you've literally seen everything that you possibly can in this world, given your story. So I'm sure that you've seen like, you know, the ups and downs of so many things, but it's just... It, no doesn't mean not right now. <laughs> like it means yeah, no. <laughs> that used to bother me too. I was like, because again, I was I was so vulnerable that I just was kind of listening to everything she said. I don't know why 
I don't know why I trusted her, but like I also saw her following on uh, her social media accounts, and I mm-hmm. just everybody treated her like the Amber who recruited me directly. She just has a presence that is mm-hmm. awesome, and I hate that it's forever. Well, not forever. I think she can grow out of it, but it's like tainted. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like she's yeah. tainted by that MLM. She'll for she'll for a while be always acquainted with you know Beachbody. Like mm-hmm. they'll look at her and think beach body. Cause I, I think she went to summit and she was on some videos and stuff mm-hmm. and she ended up doing okay. But like I said, she got out of it because of like mental health mm-hmm. and it's, you're never free. It's just so sad. And I don't, I, I, I want to say on topic, but I see this effect. I'm 31. Mm-hmm. So and I'm a Christian. And so, and you also had a video on MLMs and faith and, mm-hmm. and all of that. And the current church that I go to, so the church I went to before had 4,000 members. This one I go to now has 52. I think I was the 52nd. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And, and there's none there. But it, during a women's meeting one day, I was like, uh, just so everyone knows, I'm anti MLM. Like, do not ever try to sell me anything. And honestly, I don't. <laughs> Very God honoring. My husband, yeah. he could die. <laughs> Stop it! It's like every t- every chance I get because I'm the only mom. Let me think. <clears throat> me and one other woman, we're the only moms in the church that do not homeschool. And I applaud homeschool moms. Mm-hmm. I think they're excellent. But do you know Monica? Like how lonely they get. How mm-hmm. like. And then they feel like they're not contributing and all that. And, and I've got to see that like one-on-one, I hear people talk about it in the videos, but they're so lonely. Like they want a sisterhood and all of that. And, but at the same time, they are a full-time teacher. Like they're Mm -hmm. teaching their children. They don't have time for that crap. Like that, you know, side hustling and like cold messaging, like they do not have time for that. Yeah. And so that's really a joke when they try to pitch that to, to um, homeschool moms. My phone's about to, it's, I got 20%, so it should be good. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Um, yeah. I, I see it all the time. And I mean, just recently I had someone tell me that um, apparently there's like some kind of app where it's like a neighborhood app or something. I've never heard of this mm-hmm. before, but I'm also not as tech savvy as, I might seem sometimes, but I've never heard of an app like this, but apparently um, there was a woman that was talking to the person that I am talking about in the story. And Mm -hmm. um, so she ended up, they were, you know, friends and stuff. And this person is a mom. She's a stay at home mom. Um, And so of course, sometimes you want moms because I don't have kids, so I can't Mm -hmm. relate on a lot of things. Um, And so the person ended up, friend requesting her on Facebook. And so she was like, Oh, cool. Like I have another friend who's a mom and they're in my neighborhood. Like this is cool. So she Mm -hmm. accepted the friend request and literally every post was MLM related. And she Mm -hmm. just like unfriended and blocked right away. And, and I, and I feel as though it's so deceptive because I know that they're trying to get away from like the Hey Han message. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, and I, I understand that, but don't go after people because some people are looking for like a human interaction. Some people are looking Mm -hmm. for that sisterhood. Yeah. And it's like, don't befriend someone. And I actually heard a team call. I don't remember if it was on YouTube or if someone sent it to me, I don't remember. But this, this woman was talking to her team and basically saying like, yeah, when I go and I travel, um, let's say I'm going to like New York city or something. And she was saying how, I'll find people in the area, like influencers in the area. And mm-hmm. I use that term, I use that term very loosely because they, I don't think that they understand what the word actually means. But anyway, um, mm-hmm. so they'll actually find people that have a large following on social media and say, Hey, I really liked your profile. Would you like to meet for coffee or something? Cause I'm going to be traveling yeah. to the area. Mm-hmm. And then they befriend them. And then all of a sudden, the pitch comes and, and it's so deceptive because why, like, why, why do you have to recruit people that way? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, 
And yeah. how how long were you in Beachbody for? Probably six months. Okay, okay. So you were in it for an amount of time to actually see like what happens behind the scenes. Um, mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm not sure because you have watched my videos. So. Um, mm -hmm. Just to, I guess, for anyone watching this who will try to tell me that I'm like not necessarily lying but not telling the truth, the things that I have said in my videos, did you experience the same or something similar? The same. Okay. The okay. same. It's, I mean, the same. It's They're called hun bots mm -hmm. for a reason. It's literally yeah. like they're programmed to just – you know, say the exact same things as the person above them. It is a script. It is a line. It is, they have an answer for everything and there's exactly the same. It is. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So yeah. Cause I feel like sometimes they'll say like, Oh, well you didn't make it because you didn't try hard enough or it's not the same for everybody. Like not everyone's going to make it. But after my, like starting my channel because I was only going to upload one video and just to tell my story because I found um, Savannah Murray on YouTube and so I after watching mm -hmm. her I basically like binge watched her and after watching her I was like you know what I want to tell my story I think I'm ready to finally tell my story and tell the real story because I told my story on my blog back in 2017 but I was very um, censored in that. So I yeah. wanted to, <laughs> yeah. So I wanted to come out and basically show like that, not necessarily that I was lying in that post, but I was sugarcoating it a little bit. And mm -hmm. I didn't expect for anyone to really watch it. And ever since that video, the amount of people that have reached out to me and said the, like your story is probably the every single time that I think about it, I'm like, oh, it can't get worse. Like there can't be a worse story out there. And once you told me your story and how they targeted you because of what you went through, mm -hmm. I was thinking in my head, like, this is the worst one I've heard so far because it's just, to me, it's just, it's so disgusting that, you know, they took advantage of your situation. Mm -hmm. Um, and someone who, like I said before, has lost people to that and has seen someone go from their normal self to a completely unrecognizable person because of, mm -hmm. you know, the substances. Um, it's just I can never understand. Like, I don't know if it's just that they don't think about it or if they don't understand the severity of the situation. Mm -hmm. um, but I just I don't know. I, I could I could never reach out to someone and be like, Hey, so I see that you went through this, mm -hmm. you know, why don't you join this? Because mm -hmm. this can help you and put you back on track or whatever the case may be. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And, um, I don't want to fire you up more, but let me tell you, <laughs> let me tell you it, it, they so she's the one that like hook line and sinker because I was working in the gym, but this all I've, they should be ashamed of themselves because now, so I'm seven years out, Monica, seven mm -hmm. years. Yep. Seven years clean. It was in November. I'm still in therapy. I'm still <sighs> in therapy. You know what I mean? Like, and I'll, I will be, I may be in therapy forever and that's okay. And my, I have a very supportive and loving husband, but in the first year, let's see. Yeah. First year. Do you want to know? what else was suggested for my uh, PTSD and all and my depression, which I, w I wasn't like not depression. Like you would think I was just going through growing pains, mm -hmm. um, essential oils. <laughs> I was, I was going to say, did a young living hun reach out to you and say, this will cure this, 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 and this. <laughs> yes, girl. Yes. And I, I'm on medicine and mm -hmm. I don't care to say that at all. Mm -hmm. And, I was, I remember then, and I was still pretty vulnerable, but I like, you know, but I, I was like, what? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Yeah. I was like, I am not going to rub that nasty crap on me to this day. Like, I can't. She gave me a sample mm -hmm. and I was like, I don't know. I threw it in the trash. I was insulted, honestly, because yeah. uh, that is, that's, that's insanity. 
That's mm-hmm. insanity. And then I hear these horror stories that, that, you know, it can not cure, but maybe help. I don't know, with your kids' autism and stuff. How yeah. as a mom, like, if someone's, I, I have a temper money. Like, I would probably <laughs> punch somebody in the face. I would have to tell them. And that's why, I, and I'm a, I'm a church lady. So <laughs> I'm like, okay, so that was the worst one. And that was from somebody at church, which, okay, so... I'm, I'm from a, I lived in Atlanta and I'm just a little, my, what does my husband say? I'm just a little ghetto. Is what he says. <laughs> a little and so I go to church and like, I'm in the church circles and, and I, I, I do, I love the Lord so much, but sometimes I, I don't really like fit in necessarily with the typical church. I call them Betty Baptist. That's what I call them. <laughs> so, and I was and and but it's saturated the 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 MLM hunbots like all over the place. So that and then in a women's Bible study also and them knowing my situation, my financial situation, mm-hmm. uh, try to sell me some like Mary Kay, which you know whatever. But I think the oil thing was d- just like really disturbing. And hey, how about like let me just go to church and serve the Lord? Like I don't need to. Mm-hmm. And do you know, I mean, I, I think, I think you said that you weren't religious or something like that. Am I wrong? I was brought up religious, um, uh-huh. but I don't really practice it anymore. Um, but I also like most of my family is religious. So I like, I know a lot about um, Catholicism and Christianity. So that's what I know a lot about. Um, but when it comes to like other religions, I don't really know too much about them. So those are the ones that I'm very, very familiar with. Mm-hmm. Um, but mm-hmm. like, I haven't been to church in a while. Um, but, but anyways, it is, it is actually biblical. Like this is a, it, you are not supposed to sell goods in the church. Like that's a mm-hmm. biblical thing. And so I just think it's very nasty. I wish I was like my husband and could just quote the scripture, but I can't, it, but it, mm-hmm. it, but Jesus like flips the tables, like mm-hmm. in, in that he like gets angry over it. So anyways, that's a whole nother thing, but it's, it's kind of crazy. It's kind of ironic mm-hmm. that, that it's so heavy in the church. And I love how you do your videos and that you don't express hate towards people mm-hmm. that, um, have been involved or still are involved. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, you do respect the privacy and you want to be there for the people that are really going through the recovery of Mm -hmm. an MLM. And, and that is a, I had someone post on my Facebook wall. I'll send it to you. And she, the first line was MLM PTSD is a real thing. And is it? I've had that. I've had that said to me by multiple people um, that it's, it's almost like, cause I'm not going to lie. When I left the MLM, literally Every single DM that I got, because I got so many about becoming, mm-hmm. you know, part of the team, like I, at one point, didn't even want to open any messages and I didn't want to accept any friends yeah. and stuff yeah. like that. And it's like, it's, it's so crazy because now after all of that and after all the research that I've done, like I have a very small circle because I have a very big, I've gone through my own fair share of things. So I have a very hard time trusting people, Mm -hmm. um, which is crazy because I'm on YouTube, like, you know, very vulnerable on YouTube. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, girl, I'm going to start a YouTube channel, but I'm I'm kind of like, I'm like you, like, it's kind of, it's really putting yourself out there. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I like to keep my circle very small. Um, so I'm not one to really open up to like a random stranger as much, which Mm -hmm. it's crazy hearing myself say this because I'm on YouTube, but um, that's Mm -hmm. why whenever like someone talks to me, I mean, I've even had people come into our business and uh, I had young living Huns in here. Um, They were very respectful because I told them, I said, I'm not into it. Um, and I didn't really mention anything about being anti MLM only because I didn't want to start like an argument. Um, but I've had other people say like, Oh, would you ever be open to selling this? And I always tell them like, well, if it's an MLM product, no, cause now I'm starting to get a little more vocal with it. 
And mm-hmm. the other day I had someone call me yes, no, yesterday, the day before I had someone call me and, um, they were like, Oh, so just so you know, um, I'm looking for this specific oil. And I'm like, Oh, well, we don't really have it. And I'm like, do you by any chance know what brand it is? Because maybe it's at another store. Oh yeah. Young living sells it. And I was like, Nope, we don't, we don't carry that here. <laughs> Yeah. And I would be like, oh, and by the way, maybe just YouTube search it or just do the research. Yeah. Because that yeah. business in itself is just a hot mess. Yeah. Like, the founder, uh, it's crazy. Did you watch um, uh, uh, Illuminati, the channel that's on YouTube? She just mm-hmm. did a really, really good deep dive into Young Living. Like, sh- she did the dang thing with the research that she did because mm-hmm. I. I found some of the stuff that she did talk about. I did find some of that, but I mean, she did some digging and uh, cause I, Mm -hmm. I follow her on Twitter and stuff too. And I saw that people, you know, were saying like nasty things to her and they, what I noticed is a lot of the MLM puns, what they do is they always say like, do your research, but here's the crazy thing. And I don't know if you experience this too, but when I was in Beachbody, I would always ask them like, Hey, you know, so-and-so said this to me and I don't really know how to respond because it would be like, you know, that you're in an MLM or like something like that. And I would always say like, yes, I do. I, I am aware that I am in this business model, but, um, and I, I had some people say it was a pyramid scheme, which is of course their opinion. That's fine. Um, Mm -hmm. but I would always ask my uplines, you know, what do I say to this person? And they would always say, like I would always say that I want to research it more and they would say things of the sort of like, no, we already did the research for you. Here's the explanation. And this is what you say to people. So I don't know if it's just that. And this is why I have nothing in the, the you know, maybe it's just our uplines feeding them information and, they don't think to look it up and maybe they're just, you know, not necessarily idolizing, but they're looking at them as like a mentor or something. A mentor, so they take their, sure. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So they take their word for it, but then it's like, but then you're spreading misinformation. And there was, um, something that was sent to me. She was a Monet. Yeah. Monet rep. And she was saying how, like, you know, this is, um, she had like a, an, an Instagram live or whatever, or, Instagram TV, whatever it's called. And Mm -hmm. so she talked about how her family was in a pyramid scheme before. So she knows what a pyramid scheme is. But after, Mm -hmm. yeah, but after Mm -hmm. listening to it, I'm like, girlfriend, that's not a pyramid scheme. You were in a full blown Ponzi scheme slash scam. (laughs) And so I'm always like, you know, and, and I know that people will say like, oh, don't just go to Google university or whatever, but they're doing the same thing. And, you yeah. know, it's just because, because like I, I went to, I went to college and I got my MBA just because I went to college does not mean that I know more than the next person who didn't go to college. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, because there's, there's a lot of information out there on the internet. Granted, there are certain sources that aren't really credible sources, Yeah, but it doesn't mean that, you don't know what you're talking about because you didn't go to school for it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's oh, yeah. crazy to me, but sorry, sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's totally fine. I mean, I just, I, I think that it is just insane. I don't know. Now I'm, I'm 31. So like, I'm, I'm pretty far removed from it all. And I, I don't, I don't ever want to say, I never say I'm above something or like, I would never do that again. But mm-hmm. I want to say, like, I could not fall for an MLM pitch again. There's just no way. There's mm-hmm. no way. Because I, I is so disgusting. Mm-hmm. And as you're talking and I'm thinking about, uh, I've seen, we've obviously probably seen a lot of the same things. Mm-hmm. And you know what is terrifying to me is I do study religion. I, I haven't gone to college. My husband has, he has gone to college for, um, biblical studies but some of their their tactics i don't say this loosely or flippantly with full confidence they are cult like tactics 
Mm-hmm. And they make you feel like you're trapped. And then also, I just watched recently, say it's a startup MLM. I watched their promo video and I was like shook. Because I like I mean, Scientology. It, it, yes, yes. <laughs> like dancing around and their dresses and there's like, I was like, yuck. This is, uh, like, I. I think it's some kind of skincare line. I'll have to look further into it, but I had sent it before I came across your page. I sent it to Emily, Emily, Emily Leah. Mm-hmm. I think is how you say her name and um, which she didn't feature it, but I'm going to have to send it to you because I, I feel like we need to get on these things before mm-hmm. they you know, get bigger. And I was like, this is like a freaking cult. Like everybody mm-hmm. looks so happy and um, girl, can I please say something to, and you can cut it if you want to, but okay. <laughs> nobody talks about this. Literally nobody. But are you familiar with the Chris Watts case? Uh, yes. Thrive. Are you thinking of Thrive? Yes. Mm-hmm. And the fact that she lived this in this, I don't know, you know, we don't know how things really were. Nobody does. Mm-hmm. But because of the MLM, me and you both know she's told to live her best life on Facebook or always, always appear to be something. And, and if I was, if now I go to therapy now and I go in there like, whoo, you know, I just put it all on the table, like everything that I'm going through, I'm a hundred percent, a hundred percent of the time. But if I was selling an MLM, like if I would have stuck with Beachbody, I know for a fact, there's no way that I could be even to my, my church family or people that are supposed to be safe people. I always need to appear to be living my best life because anybody's a target, anybody's a customer, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I just think that needs to be talked about at some point. You can do that on your channel. I've, I've actually been asked to look into that and I was waiting for, because I actually did two videos that were more true crime about the Chris Watts case. And I got, Mm -hmm quite a bit of backlash for it. So I was trying to wait until that all settled down a little bit so that I could mm-hmm. further research it and people wouldn't be, cause I feel like everyone had their own side. And I think that people weren't looking at from a, like, like watching my videos from a different perspective, they were automatically like in attack mode. So, um, cause it was around the time that um, Cindy Watts, like that whole book thing was happening. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So I took a break from it, but someone did ask me, they were like, can you look into thrive and can you somehow see if it has anything to do with that whole thing? And I'm like, well, well, I think it's just as simple as that. What we just said, if you're selling an MLM product, you have to appear to be perfect Mm -hmm. and you don't have safe people, you know? Yeah. So it's really, I mean, I just think, yeah, but like you said, it, it, it's a, it's a subject that you have to tiptoe because, because of I'm, the severity. Every time, every time I see that, every time I see a video about the Chris Watts, cause I love true crime and I'm like, you know, I, I'm somebody please say something because no. they, they show the pictures and the perfect pictures. And I'm like, that all had to do with her job. But, mm-hmm. but it, it, anyways, like I, I am definitely in the camp of, you know, you, you know, you can't look at it. Like you have to take these bad situations and just learn from it. Mm-hmm. And that's what I mean by that. Like, I'm not saying by no means that it was her fault or her upline's fault for what mm-hmm. he did. Mm-hmm. But it just is so sad to me that she couldn't be real mm-hmm. because you can't in that business. And so, yeah. yeah, I will. I will say if you are into true crime, a really good person to watch on YouTube is Christina Randall. She I don't know if you've come across her yet, but um, I think I watch her. She does the conspiracy theories, too. Um, She's more so she reports more on what's going on. And she was actually um, she went to prison. And so she talks about that story a lot. Yeah. 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 So she's a great person to watch. (laughs) I relate to her. I do. I relate to her because I I have a girl. (laughs) I have a rough background, but I I, like watch her in her lingo and I'm like, I feel you. Yeah. (laughs) I feel you. 
Yeah. She's funny, but yeah. Anyways, I hear my kids coming in from okay, school. Okay. Okay. So it'll they'll be in the background the whole time. So I better get off of here. But but okay. to but to wrap it up, if there was anything that you wanted to end with. I mean, I just want to say thank you for sharing your story because I feel like the beginning of your story is kind of hard for, I mean, I'm not going to lie. It was kind of hard for me to hear only because I was like, oh my God, this poor girl, like (laughs) she went through hell and back. So um, I did want to say thank you for coming on here and telling your story and talking about how you were targeted and everything like that, because I feel as though once people start hearing more of the ex Han bots, Han bots. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, yeah. And their stories. I feel like it gives the anti MLM community a little more credibility. Um, so mm-hmm. yeah, I just want to say thank you for coming on here and talking to me. It has been a pleasure and just keep doing what you're doing. And I know it gets discouraging sometimes and just keep pressing on because just see the bigger picture and, you know, what you're doing. It's not about likes or shares or subscriptions. It's really about maybe just that one person that does subscribe or does see one video. Do it for that one person. Mm -hmm. So just keep going. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> All right. Sure. Well, it's nice meeting you. Nice. It was meeting nice meeting you. you. All right. If you guys have watched up to here, thank you so much for watching, and um, let me know in the comment section what you guys think. Don't forget to like, dislike, subscribe, support me on Patreon, check out my merch, all that good stuff. And um, for those of you who asked about Lily the other day, she is doing fine. She just has to wear the cone of shame now for a couple of days. So, (laughs) Um, but anyway, thank you so much for watching. This is Monica reporting to you live from a highway with Lily. Bye.